Good morning, everyone. I have something so exciting to talk to you guys about today. Um, you know, I have a studio upstairs that I've been doing on my weaving. Right now, it's going to be just a fiber studio, so I'm not going to be doing any sewing up there. Um, Lizzie's dollhouse is up there, which takes up a huge amount of room. So I have decided to turn half of my bedroom, which happens to be the master bedroom of the house, into a sewing room. And so I'm going to give you a tour of my new sewing room. And right now all it's in is the furniture and fixtures. And I'll do another video that is, you know, supplies and equipment, materials and all that good stuff. Because right now I still don't know where I'm going to put everything. And I still don't even know what all I've got. It's all stored upstairs in a closet in that, uh, the room that's my studio. So anyways, I wanted to give you a little tour and um, show you what I went through to build this thing. So uh, I'll talk to you on the other side. First thing we've got to do is hang a cabinet. And first thing I need to do is find out where the studs are in this wall. Yep, I think I found them, measuring things out. Um, we really want a specific place that we're going to put this cabinet at. So making sure we know where the studs are, where everything is supposed to go, making sure everything is level is really important when it comes to hanging cabinets. One of the things that we wanted to do was make sure we had it high enough and to order to do that we almost needed to have um, some sort of scaffolding in a way. So yes we're using comic long boxes for part of it and the other part that we're using is my pot that I'm holding my onion skins right now in preparation for them to be dyeing. So making sure everything's the right height, cabinet goes up. Good thing I have a nice strong husband to help me do all this. And there he goes. Thank you Scott for helping me getting it all measured out, leveled out. Next thing I need to do is make sure it's all nice and level. And at that point I can start drilling it in. Now while I could drill the holes for the screws, I'm not actually strong enough to put them in. I wasn't at a very good angle. And so once I got the holes drilled, I asked Scott to come up and actually put the screws into the wall because he had a better leverage than I did on it and uh, he was able to do a much better job at it. Again, I really appreciate having Scott help me on this project. Without him, I would not have been able to get it done. Now that the cabinet is hung, we need to start working on the cubicles. Um, I had built the first cubicle. Scott was kind enough to nail on the backing board for me. Um, I actually really enjoyed building these little cubie things. They were a lot of fun. Um, I got really so good at it, it by the time I got to the end, it's like, oh, the heck with the instructions. Let's just put this puppy together. And like I said, I really enjoyed doing it. Um, I don't know. I just enjoy this kind of thing. And as far as flat pack stuff, these things from Menards are extremely well put together. Um, the instructions are very easy to follow. And I'll be honest with you, I think they're better than Ikea. I really do. Um, these just went together so perfectly. Everything lined up. Uh, they were really super easy to build. So I would really recommend these things from Menards. So, yeah, I enjoyed putting these together. And... Uh, Scott, like I said, is putting on the backs for me, and uh, that helped me an awful lot. And we used a different stuff for the backing board. Rather than using what came with it, we actually went out and bought this eighth, mil or eight, um, eighth inch backing stuff that's real smooth. We wanted to make sure that the legs had a lot of strength behind them, and the little cardboard things that came with them, I just didn't have any strength at all. Next thing we did is Scott helped me hang up my pegboard and uh, again we had to find studs which means we actually ended up having to drill a hole into the pegboard to get it to hung, hang right. Now this cabinet here is a wall cabinet. It's one of the ones that I got uh, when one of our tenants moved out so it didn't cost me anything. And above it I've got three of my mannequin heads left over from Dyed in the Wool and they're modeling three of my favorite hats that I like. And so what this cabinet here is going to be is office supplies. Uh, paper, scissors, um, staples, tape, whatever I need office supplies wise, this is where it's going to be stored. And the reason why it's going to be there is directly under it, 
on the cutting table here is where I'm going to put my printer and in front of it I'm going to put my laptop. So this is going to be kind of a, a computer station. So many patterns anymore come PDF that you have to print out and then tape them together. And so that's this is my area for all of that. So this is kind of the business end of the deal. This area here is where my sewing machine is going to be set up at. I'm going to set it up on this uh, enamel table. This enamel table, I think, is from the 40s. So, yeah, it was kind of neat pulling this in. I love antiques and everything. And I like the idea that I'm using this wonderful old table for my sewing machine. And then above here, we've got a 2x4 pegboard that I will hang a lot of my supplies and stuff like that that I need for sewing. Um, I'm not sure yet if or what I'm going to do about a spool rack. I haven't made up my mind yet. So, yeah. So this is going to be where the sewing machine goes. And in case you want to know what this is, this is the collar and tag to my Clenfor Sheep uh, Kala Haraka that I have now gifted to a friend of mine for her farm. But, um... I kept the collar and the tag. I have just a little memory of her. And so what I've got there, the bookcase at the very end, the top is my journals. The next row down is uh, Rakshan Shanti's uh, apartment, if you will. And then below that, I'm putting in materials for projects that I want to do. Um, just things. I mean, I've got some wool there. I've got some old denim, which I'm going to donate to somebody. I have curtains that need to be hemmed. I just have some right now some materials and stuff like that for things that I want to do in the future. And right now I just don't have any other place to put them. They probably will end up being someplace else, but for right now that's where I've got them. My cutting table has these little 3 by 3 cubie units. Um, I got these from Menards um, as the legs, if you will. Also, they have lots of storage in them. And this side of the storage is going to end up being sewing books, sewing supplies, that kind of thing, since it's right next to my sewing table. Also, on top of this unit is a little pressing pad. Because I thought, if I'm going to be pressing open seams and everything, I don't necessarily always want to get the ironing board out. So this is a 100% wool pressing pad with a little silicone iron mat. And so this is probably where I will do my pressing and stuff at. If I have to do long seams or anything, I probably will get out the ironing board. For, for the most part, I see this is working just fine for me. The The cutting table itself is actually um, two 8-foot uh, by 2-foot shelves put together and bracketed underneath. Um, so I've got a four foot by eight foot cutting table. The green cutting mat on top is actually three foot by four foot. So it gives you an idea how large of a space I've got. But considering some of the things that I want to make, um, I really wanted a nice size cutting table. And as you can see underneath, there are more of those cubie units to act as legs. And, uh, I really, really like this. Obviously, the mat's brand new, so it's got to get flattened down. But look at this wonderful, huge space. Now, right there in the center is going to be the printer and everything. But still, I think I have a beautiful, wonderful, big space to, to cut fabric out. So, just to give you a shot under the table, I've got these brackets holding together the two boards to keep them from sliding apart. And then I've got some power strips attached. This power strip here, I'm going to use the on off switch to actually turn on and off the light that goes above rather than pulling it from the pull string. Um, I'm short, it's hard to reach the pull string, so I figured if I plug it in in such a way that I can just turn on and off a switch, that would work perfectly. And as you can see underneath, I've got lots and lots of storage space with these cubicles. And I've got these attached down using these little L brackets and it's just enough to kind of keep everything from sliding around and sliding back and forth. And it helps hold the uh, the tabletop in place as well. So that I could have a seat sitting at the cutting table, I actually got this little stool and it actually extends up and down. I think it goes from 24 inches to 29 inches tall. Um, it, right now where I've got it set at is really comfortable for me so I can actually sit and work on top of the table sitting on this stool. And, uh, yeah, I've, I'm really happy I got that. And I could slide it back in there. That way it's not in my way or anything. But, uh, so that's that. Now, as far as lighting in here goes, 
Right now I have this little shop light up here, but I actually found a four foot one um, at Menards on clearance yesterday. So I'm going to be replacing this one with the four foot one and I'm going to move the little one to over here above the sewing table. Now, what am I going to do with this wall here? Obviously, I don't have anything on it and it's a blank slate. Well, I actually have a special project that I'm going to be doing that I'm reserving this wall for uh, a place to display it. And it's going to be one of the first things that I do in my sewing room. So that is a brief tour of just the, um, the furniture and the fixtures in here. I will give a longer tour later once I get the materials and equipment and supplies and everything all in here and set up. But that's probably going to take a little while, mostly because I have other projects I'm working on. And uh, it's going to take a while for me to figure out where to put everything and all that good stuff. But I'm so excited. I'm going to have a sewing room, sort of sewing half room. <laughs> oh, so thank you for joining me on this uh, journey of mine. And I can't wait to show you the rest. So I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> Bye.